Ashan is a genius. But he appears as a bad pupil to his teachers and his parents. Every day, he shows up at his home in a messy look, as if he soaked himself in swam. He even coils the test marked low score and throws for the dog to play. He eats with dirty hands, never obeys his mother, fights with children in his neighborhood. These kids' parents even get familiar with Ashan's parents. But Ashan's brother is entirely different from him. He always ranks first in his class. In class, Ashan unconsciously stares at the puddle. The teacher tells him to read English literature. But he couldn't. So she gets mad and expels him out of class, forces him to stand outside. His mates laugh at him. He drops class, runs away. When he goes back home, he tells his brother. His brother is amazed, and Ashan describes everything that happens. Ashan has a great love for colors. His pictures can make you fall in love in just a second. Ashan studied grade 3 two times. He couldn't write a single word. And this upsets mother a lot, because she didn't know where the problem is, her son or his teacher. The final math exams were delivered. However, Ashan can't focus. He starts to let his imagination goes wild. He thinks of himself being a captain who is completing the missions. While the numbers in the exam turn into planets in the universe, through all of these images, you can go to the conclusion that, he will continue to study grade 3 again. At the same day, his father found a letter of Ashan, he wants to drop school. This drives the father insane. Ashan was honest, he didn't lie, he said he was wandering on the street. His parents care for his safety, but they have never asked why Ashan insists on avoiding study. After a few exchanges with the teacher at school, they realize Ashan has never brought his exams or tests home. His scores remain zero. The president assumes Ashan has trouble with intelligence. He suggests they send him to a special school. This really confuses his parents. The father starts to blame the teachers. In a class with 60 pupils, who knows if they truly take care of our child. The mother starts her complaint, too. She says she has sacrificed her job because of her children. She even urges them to try harder every day. It just doesn't work. The couple finally blames the school. They decide to let Ashan goes to a boarding school. Despite him begging and crying, his parents show no mercy. The father believes that Ashan's imagination is the reason why he doesn't study well. Ashan was sent to a boarding school. Though the mother wasn't contented, she still left him there. Ashan does study diligently. It just that his results aren't as expected. At the boarding school, the eating and sleeping time are put into a strict discipline. No one helps him, so he hides in the bathroom and cries at night. Day by day, Ashan learns to be independent. The teacher has him sit on the first row, and asks him to translate a poem. His answer didn't satisfy the teacher, but that's the essence of the poem. Seems like only his tablemate can share with him. In art class, Ashan starts to stares at the birds outside the window. The teacher throws chalk at him. He even uses to ruler to punish Ashan. Greater than the teachers here behave unfriendly towards Ashan. Every single word seems like they are flying with Ashan. It's not because he isn't hardworking. He tried his best. Hence, he has to bear the teacher's complaints every day. And even being made fun of by his friends. What a pity. The teacher calls his parents. They can't understand why. So mother and father take him out to relax for a while. Then leave him at the boarding school again. Until recently, the school has a new art teacher. The whole school are curious. Because the way the teacher shows up is weird. He cosplays a clown. And plays with his pupils. But Ashan keeps silent all the time. The unusual thing about this teacher is. He can help his pupils broaden their mind. In his first class, he gives each child a blank paper. And encourages them to use their imagination. They can do whatever they want. Imagination is Ashan's strength, but he can't draw. But this time, there is no punishment. He even cheers Ashan. Ashan is shocked. The teacher finds Ashan a bit odd. Even when Ashan calls his parents, he literally can't say in full and complete sentences. He just cries. One day, the art teacher sees Ashan being punished. He nestles to a corner. At that moment, the teacher decides to learn more about him. He approaches Ashan's tablemate first. When he checks Ashan's notebooks, he realizes that Ashan has reading and writing disorder. So the teacher decides to visit Ashan's home. Until then, he knows how much Ashan loves art. Ashan shows a dreamy way of thinking. The teacher points out these mistakes that Ashan often makes for his family. 
B but he writes D, while he makes DAB, Ashan makes mistakes with the same alphabets. That's as the common symptom of people who have reading and writing disorder. If you can read, you can explain the meaning. The father was enlightened. He feels ashamed. It turns out that Ashan has been painfully suffering from this disorder. He can either button or tie the shoelace himself. He can't grab the ball that his brother throws. He can't even do the smallest thing. Ashan's belief, which was destroyed at the early stage, now gets weaker. Even art, the thing he likes the most, but now he's about to give up. This disorder has nothing to do with IQ. The teachers can tell he's a clever boy when he sees his pictures. He made a decision, he will discover the inner world of Ashan. He tells his pupils the story of a person who has reading and writing disorder. He says that, geniuses like Albert Einstein and Leonardo da Vinci, or Edison, they are all contracted this disorder. He hopes this can comfort Ashan. He admitted he had this disorder when he was young, too. So he shares deep sympathy with Ashan. Ashan is just like his reflect mirror. Finally, Ashan says something. In his class, the teacher takes the pupils out to a suburb. Ashan suddenly comes up with many weird ideas. He uses the small things that he collected, then cover them on a branch and assemble everything to make a little ship that can actually work. The whole class give him a big applause. Ashan is changing. The art teacher even asks the president to have extra classes with Ashan. Under the teacher's guide, Ashan keeps on developing. He can now read and write. Soon, he can absorb the knowledge of grade 3. The teacher tries to exploit Ashan's gifted art talent. One day, the father comes to see the teacher. He is so embarrassed. He admitted he has never genuinely cared for his son. The father cries when he sees what his son has been dealt with all these times. Ashan now can button and tie the shoelace on his own. To prove Ashan's gifted drawing talent, the teacher holds a competition. It's a drawing competition that pupils and teachers can participate. There is an ocean of people at the competition. Time starts. Each person is given a blank and white paper. A painter. Ashan looks chilling. He hides in a corner and starts his work. The colors are different in the eyes of a genius. Ashan draws himself sitting on the lakeshore. The teacher draws a laughing Ashan. After a few discussion of the judges, the winner announced as Ashan. The audience gives him the loudest applause. The teachers are taken aback too. Ashan, with the art teacher's support, he saunters towards the stage. The president rewards Ashan. Afterwards, Ashan rushes towards the art teacher and hugs him tightly. His talent is finally shown. Still the same thing. There is no bad student, only the lousy teacher. Students are like blank papers, while parents and teachers are the ones who decide what to draw on them, to help them to grow, both mentally and physically. Each child is unique, but they all need protection and sympathy.